Greetings, everybody. Nick DiVirgilio here at Mojave Microphones, a nice little fun factory here with Colin Liebick, Dusty Wakeman. We're here to talk Mojave Microphones. Yes, we are. A lot of great stuff that comes out of this little room. We use all the time at Sweetwater Studios. I mean, constantly Mojave's being used in our studios for drums and all kinds of different instruments. So we love that. What are we going to see while we're here today? All kinds of goodies. I imagine all so. All kinds of goodies. But the post-it note wall is one great thing that we might be looking at. Well, let's not zoom in too close. Those are, <laughs> those are unique quotes from a couple of the guys around the office, nice. including David Roy. I just thought how it's so precise. There's so many of them up there. I well, it, was... it kind of tells you something, doesn't sure. it? Sure, yeah. <laughs> well, Gabe put that together. He's a drummer, too, so oh, I can hence the order. I got you. Right. Nice. Well, I'd like to just first say, you know, I'm really happy to be part of Mojave because this is a new partnership, and Dusty and I have been kind of scheming. Scheming for a while now. Yeah, for a couple of years. Plotting and scheming. And, you know, I, this is again another case of any of the brands I, I'm affiliated with, I was a customer of. And one of the things I love about this partnership is definitely my use of Mojave microphones. Okay. So getting to do something with Dusty and make this happen and talk to the world about microphones sure. is super exciting. Yep. Definitely. Good thing. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, I've been making music my whole life, but until I got to Sweetwater, I never got a chance to use Mojave before. and. What a I mean, way pleasant surprise. Right. Gorgeous. It's, you know, I do a, a lot of drum stuff, and boy, they make drums sound great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Yep. Well, and today you're going to see why and how that came about and all the funny things that go into making Mojave mics, the people, right. the you know aspects to how we QC, how mics are put together. You're going to see all of it. All right. You're going to meet David Royer. That's pretty exciting. Who's the designer behind all these goodies. Nice. Yeah. Killer. Let's go check it out. Cool. Cool. All right. All right, fellas, we're gonna see a lot of cool things, but over here on these shelves back here, you're burning in microphones. That's just in case somebody's watching this video for the first time, doesn't know what that means. What's going on back there? Well, we're doing our quality control. These mics have tubes in them. Okay. So we like to burn them in for 24 hours, have them on for 24 hours, right. heat it up, and then David comes and listens to every one of them, and gives his official okie dokie. Okay. Yeah, it's really important. Every mic, David Royer QCs okay. and listens to, and make sure it's fit to leave the building. Right. And that, you know, that's important. Again, awesome. when you have uh, one of the principles of the company making sure every aspect of it is right, that means a lot to us. And I think it means a lot to the people that use our microphones. The mic ship with a card that has the serial number and all the how to register it, and David signs those personally. Nice. So, Each yeah, one. so it's, there's, he's hands on with just right. oh, yeah. very hands on yeah, definitely. with Definitely. Right. And you know, you're gonna, the quality's going to be great when you're just right out of the box. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And see all these little babies are kind of hanging out here. They're all burning in. There's an ME1000 I see on top, and it's kind of fun seeing them all cut. This is where they come to life. It's like Frankenstein. Now, how many mics a day are on that shelf? Is this kind of a normal number of usually, mics? Usually eight, sometimes 16. Okay. If we're, you know, in a crunch right. and got to get them out, but usually eight. Okay. Eight at a time. Nice. And that's something that Big John does. He sets them all up. Speaking of Big John. Here he is now. He's over here on the left. Oh, yeah. And he's going to, he's actually, we're going to go through putting together an ME1000 right. and how it's done. And we're going to film that because uh, you get to see the whole handmade aspect, hands-on aspect of all of it. The big secret to our microphones is the, the quality of the components that we use, coupled with David's designs. Of course. So that's what we're doing here. So, the white so thing there, that's the transformer. That's a, a Coast Magnetics transformer that's custom built to David's specs. It's a toroidal transformer, which is rear in a microphone. Yeah, very. And it just gives you this huge bottom end. Now, those parts, are those parts made here? Or do you yeah, bring yeah, they're made in Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they're brought we, to, not in this particular building. Not in this I building. Got it. Okay. No. But they're brought here, and you yeah, then it's a third party. We may mainly use Jensen transformers, which okay. are also made here. Okay. But for the MA1000, we use this one. David spec that one. Nice. And it's beautiful. Yeah. We were beta testing that microphone with different transformers, and we were close, but it just wasn't quite there in the bottom end. And then we came back to the shop one day after a session in the studio. And he rummaged through a drawer and dug that thing out. Yeah, he had it already. It was something on his mind yeah. from a previous time. I got you. So we yeah. plugged that baby in, went back to the studio, and it's like, yep, there it is. There's that bottom end we're looking for. Nice. That's but there, cool. with transformers, there's just no, no way around size. It's okay. just physics. Right. So that's why that thing is so big. 
Yeah, and when you pick up the mic, it's hefty. Yeah. All our mics are like that. Right. They have really good weight to them because they're made with solid components. Right. Nice. Yep, so the, in the solid state mics, the FETs are all custom ordered yep. to David's specs, the resistors, capacitors, it's all really high grade military spec components. And that's a, a big part of our secret. I guess it's not a secret anymore. Oh, well, no. Now we're talking <laughs> just about just told it. all the Sweetwater customers. <laughs> well, they're good customers. And yeah. I think they That's really the... appreciate this aspect of it. You bet. Would you like to watch him put one together? I think we should. Okay, okay good. So right now, the board, for the most part, has already been stopped. Uh, now I'm attaching most of the 710 XLR to the board before attaching the transformer. And I've already attached the bass pad and uh, some of the switching for the microphone to the board. How long did you have to train doing this before you were like doing this full time? That's a good question. I started playing a lot in my youth and the two things that every band wants is a bass player and somebody that can solder. So I was the guy that <laughs> fixed every guitar amp in every band nice. I've been in. Okay. And I was the bass player that knew all the songs. So There you go. Did you get paid double for these two jobs? Yes. <laughs> so, I would always make extra scratch changing out guitar pickups, fixing heads. And then I migrated into being an engineer for a million years, so always worked out building my own mic pre's and fixing all the EQs. Now I'm just <clears throat> attaching a transformer. Since it's a toroidal transformer, we just zip tie it to the PCB board. How many microphones a day are you normally putting together? Well, that's a good question. It can vary. I'll at least be working at least once a day, like building sections or whether it be cables, because I make all the cables for these microphones and some of the other ones. So I try to get a bunch of steps out of the way. So when it comes time for just building the 1000s like I'm doing now, they're already to a certain stage, but gotcha. pretty much every day. Okay. That's along with shipping and repairs and everything. Yeah. Talking to customers Customer service. The yeah, there's a lot of, a lot yeah. of, yeah. A lot of jobs. Yeah. Yep. Yes. We all do a lot of jobs around here. Yeah. So when Dave is designing a mic like this, is he getting into, I mean, all the, the bits of the circuit board itself and what those oh, things absolutely. do. I mean, it's all, it's all down to every detail. Every those detail. Things. Yeah, okay. Yep, absolutely. Rut row. Is it us? That's us. Not it. It's the one downside of a company with three people. You'd be in the middle of building a mic and the phone rings and yeah, everybody's yeah. at lunch. Uh -huh. I said I didn't stuff the board all the way, so I'm gonna, so I'm gonna grab some resistors and capacitors real quick. Now, are resistors and capacitors like a general thing, or are they designed for this specific piece? Well, they're, they're I mean, if you look at like a resistor catalog, there's thousands right, right. of entries, but it, the spec is made by David. I gotcha. To fit his design. Gotcha. Yeah, these are giga-ohm resistors, which you can't exactly pick up anywhere. Now, like the transformers, those are like that Coast transformer. That's actually manufactured to David's specs. Okay. That's not an off-the-shelf unit. Doing okay, Ma? <laughs> Would she like some water or coffee or I anything? I'll put her sub. She said okay. she's okay. I'm okay. The invitation stands. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, been, you know, with me on my career my whole life, but I don't think she's ever seen this part of uh, the music side, the right. music business, right? Yeah. <laughs> While he's doing this, just wipe to, to talk here. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, for people who don't may not know, the uses for this mic particular microphone. Well, and I know they're varied, but vocals, vocals, vocals. Okay. Oh, and vocals. And right. vocals. Right. And then probably drum overheads yep. would be a close second. Okay. Acoustic instruments, piano. Right now, I'm just putting the little insulators on the tube legs because it's a sub miniature tube, so they're flexible. It's not like a. 12AX7 or something everybody's used to, where it's just short, little rigid legs. John, any idea how many of these you've made? Uh, almost 400, because I think this is serial number 398. Wow. So, very so you've put together every one? Uh, yes, sir. Wow. This one's actually going to Sweetwater. Wow, so that is a Sweetwater mic being put together. The tubes we use on this and 
all of our tube mics are uh, JAN, Joint Army Navy, New Old Stock, 5840s. It's a sub miniature, and uh, David used to be a sonar technician in the Navy, okay. and has been using that tube since those days. Put a little grommet on here since it's a sub miniature tube the, with the springy legs, so they don't bounce around and shatter the tube. Can you describe the capsule at all? Well, it's a, you'll notice it's not center terminated. There's no screw in the middle. Like the Neumann style capsules are all center terminated, but this is a CK-12 style capsule, which is what AKG CK-12s and Telefunken 251s use, and uh, they're edge terminated. So it's a little bit different than what you normally see for large diaphragm mics, but they're beautiful sounding. These, this mic has a little, instead of having the, a rise in the presence band, it's got a little dip, like from 5 to 8K, okay. and then like a really big rise above 10K. So it gives it that airy sound, and it's great for handling sibilance, which is opposed to the K67 style capsule that we use in the 200s and 300s and the FET mics, which has more of a rise from 5 to 8K. So they're a little more present. This is a little more airy. So Dusty, how long has this particular mic been around? I think it's been about three years now since we introduced it. Okay. It's our latest. This and the MA50, which is our transformerless large, uh, large diaphragm cardioid mic, uh, came out about three years ago. And how long has this relationship with Sweetwater and Mojave been going on? Oh, since day one, 15 years. Yeah, since the very beginning. Okay. We started with one mic, the MA200. That's all we had for the first year, and right. then added, kind of yearly added different models. And now we're up to, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six models. This being, of course, the flagship of the brand, the MA-1000. And is it cool to see the growth of Mojave and the growth of Sweetwater happening sort of at the same time? Oh, it's great. Sweetwater's an incredible partner, and uh, we've been working together very closely this entire time. Lots of great events in the studio and Gear Fest and meetings with the sales guys. And yeah, it's a great partnership. They're a pleasure to deal with. Looks like we're getting towards the end. Yeah, looks like we're we at the it's like end. Looks like a microphone. Yeah. So whoever has serial number th three ninety eight, this is your mic. Yeah, it's famous. <laughs> so now does it go from this point directly over to the, uh, the burning in part? Directly yes. to the burning in. This is the box that it comes in. We're really proud of the packaging mm -hmm. on this mic. Sure, and don't forget the ca the road case is fantastic right. that it comes in. So this is the package that the MA-1000 ships in. This is the uh, the wood box you just saw. They're a little tight when they're new. There you go, with its little silica gel pack to keep it nice and dry. So that goes in there. This is the power supply, and one of the unique features of this, we use it for our MA-300 as well is that it's um, multi-pattern, but the pattern selector is actually on the power supply. And it's continuously variable from Omni to figure eight. So you can get hypercardioid or in between positions that you wouldn't normally get if you just have a three-way switch. And David wisely used the same power supply for the MA-1000 that the MA-300 uses, so they're interchangeable. That's a, quite a sturdy box. I mean, that's... Oh, you need it. Yeah, I mean... That's really going to keep that microphone sure. yeah. cozy shipping across the country on a plane or wherever it's well, going to be going yeah. to. Yeah. And some yeah. people end up buying a microphone, then they go out and buy one of these to put the microphone in. We just kind of said, okay, let's give it to you right from the get-go. Right. This is the Slingshot that was uh, developed by our sister company, Royer Labs, and we licensed it from them. It's really a superior shock mount. A lot of research went into this, and uh, they work great. It uses parachute cord, so yeah. it'll never stretch out. You won't ever have to re replace it. And I know from experience at Sweetwater Studios, once you put you place those mics, even if they're up high in the room or over the drum kit or whatever, they don't move. Yeah, they're going to yeah. stay there. Yeah, sure. And that's the package. All right, so we're in a back room here at the factory, and this is David Royer. Nice to see you, sir. Uh, how do you do? And you're going to show us some uh, QC testing on your microphones, right? Yes. All right, well, take us through that. Okay, um, first of all, uh, when these microphones arrive, they have already been tested. However, we always do a, a final QA test to make sure that uh, something hasn't gone haywire along the way. With the microphones being shipped, they can be damaged in shipping, and we've seen a few failures that way. So what I'm going to do 
So I'm going to give the, this microphone a very careful listening test, and I'm going to make sure that it's working in all of its settings, and I'm going to verify that it's in phase. I've set this microphone to its omni polar pattern. I'm going to check and make sure it is working in all of its pa or in its omni pattern. Now I'm going to switch it to cardioid and make sure that it's working in that pattern. Now I'm going to check it to uh, make sure it's working in figure eight. And I'm listening very carefully for humming, hissing, popping, or thumping noises. And uh, I'm not hearing anything, so that's a good sign. My next move is to verify that the uh, pad is working correctly. My final move here, or almost final move here is to verify that the bass roll off is working. Occasionally the switches will fail or um, a wire will break which will render the switching inoperable. It's very rare but sometimes it happens and uh, it's always the most important customer who ends up with a microphone that breaks in shipment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to verify that this microphone cable and power supply are all in phase. Uh, when the microphones are tested at the factory, they use one power supply and one cable, and they'll test a whole slew of microphones. And occasionally, a funky power supply or a funky cable will sneak out the door, or worse, what can happen is um, in, in the assembly process, wires can get nicked, and the thing will work when it's tested, but then Six days, six months, six years after the microphone is built, this little time bomb hiding inside the microphone or the power supply decides to fail. Right. And that's another uh, repairman's nightmare, but that's another story. Now, I have a reference microphone that is known to be in phase. And uh, I'm going to plug it in and uh, switch it on. I've summed the outputs of the microphones to mono. Now I'm inverting the phase on one of the microphones. And it's very obvious, if I have the phase inverted, that the outputs are canceling. In other words, with the two microphones plugged in, the, uh, the reference mic is known to be in phase. And I'll check the uh, microphone I'm checking both in phase and out of phase by flopping phase at the preamplifier. And if there's a problem with the mic, it's immediately apparent. And if anything, that approach for a quick assembly line uh, out the door test, it's faster than, than doing it with, with instruments, and it's just as reliable. And that, that pretty much covers it with the uh, um, final QA testing. And then the very last thing that I'll do is uh, I'll leave the uh, model and serial number on this uh, uh, registration card um, unmarked. Uh, Big John will sign in the model and serial number. I'll just sign it with the date. Uh, 12120. And then the uh, the author or the uh, registration card will uh, go back with the microphone and it'll be all accounted for. And then at this point, you guys box it up and ship it out to the customer. Yeah, it's ready to go. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for oh, showing you're welcome. that. All right, fellas. That was really cool. Thanks wow. so much for giving us the tour, all that great information. The microphone looks beautiful. All the microphones look beautiful. And uh, just so happy to be here. We hate to see you go. Well, we'll come back again. We're thrilled that you came. Yeah. I know you have some exciting things for the future coming up with yep. Mojave, right? Lots of big and news. Lots of big news, and you'll all be hearing about that really soon. And a lot, you know, I'm looking forward to a long and even more fruitful relationship with Sweetwater. Absolutely. We are. Too. Can't wait to get back there. Thank you, fellas. Great Appreciate having it. you, man. Thanks, guys. And thanks for bringing Mom. Yeah. She had a good time. <laughs> yeah. All right. That was nice. Thanks, everybody.